Let's take a look at exercise 32. Now, we've already covered arteries, so now we're on veins. Now, once you've learned arteries, veins aren't that bad because a lot of the veins are found in the same place with the same name, but some of them aren't. So looking at question one right here, first how you define a vein. Remember, arteries take blood away from the heart to the tissues. Veins are exactly the opposite, from the tissues back towards the heart. Number two, how do you know if a vein runs superficial or deep? You can know whether a vein runs superficial or deep by knowing the names of the arteries and veins, and here's how. Remember that all arteries are going to be deep. Because of the high pressure to the inside of them, the body's always going to keep them as deep as it possibly can. That way they're well protected. But with veins with a very low pressure, well, some of those are deep, some of them are superficial. Any blood vessel that you can see beneath your skin is definitely going to be a superficial vein. So here's how you know by the names whether a vein is superficial or deep. If a vein has the same name as an artery, then that means it runs alongside that artery. And since that artery is always deep, that vein will be deep. So vein with the same name as an artery is a deep vein. But if you see a vein which has a name different from any artery, then that's a superficial vein. So always remember, same name deep, different one going to be superficial. So we'll look at some examples of that when we get to the actual pictures in exercise 32. Three right here, what are the four outflows of blood from the brain? There's four big inflows to it, and there's four big outflows from it. The right and left internal jugular veins are the two biggest outflows from the vein from the brain. And then back in your neck in the cervical region, there are two veins running through the transverse processes of the cervical vertebrae called the vertebral veins. So there's a right and left vertebral, right and left internal jugular. That's how blood gets out of your brain. Of course, there's more blood flow in and out of your brain than any other organ you have. Number four, which vein is commonly used to draw blood from? Think about the front of your elbow, the median cubital vein. We've probably all seen that one used before for that purpose. Number five, what's the longest vein in the body? <clears throat> to look at the longest vein and actually longest blood vessel in the entire body, you have to go down to the lower limb to the great saphenous vein. That vein runs from down around the ankle all the way up to the top of the thigh medial to the inside. So very long blood vessel there. That's the one they'll take pieces out of when they do the heart bypass surgeries. So let's see, that was number five. Number six, what vein draws drains blood into the liver? Now remember the liver is very unusual when it comes to its circulation. There's an hepatic artery which does take oxygen-rich blood into the liver and there's an hepatic vein that comes out the top of it. But the hepatic portal vein is a vein draining into the liver. Remember that hepatic portal system ensures that every drop of blood from the digestive system is brought to the liver first. That way anything a person eats or drinks goes straight to the liver. And one of the very big functions for that reason is detoxification. Let's the liver remove harmful chemicals before they have a chance to go anywhere else in the body and do some damage. Number seven, list at least two differences between fetal and adult circulation. One of those two differences would be the foramen ovale. The foramen, you figured that out by now, is a hole. The foramen ovale is a hole that we have in between the interatrial septum. So it's in between the right and left atria. Before you're born, you don't have to keep the blood in the right pump and left pump of the heart separated. Reason being, you're not moving air in and out of your lungs before you're born. So there are definitely some differences in fetal circulation versus adult. So again, before we're born, we have a foramen, a hole in between the two atria. Now once we take our first breath, uh, pressure changes due to changes in blood flow will push these two pieces of tissue together where that foramen's at. And there'll be, there'll be some uh, fossa, little depressions there later as an adult and such and after birth. But there's definitely a hole in between those two. So if you ever hear about a baby being born with a hole in their heart, they don't mean that the heart itself is hemorrhaging blood. They mean that this hole in between the right and left atria has not fused together. And you figure after the baby's born, that's a bad thing because you definitely need to keep that low oxygen blood over in the right pump and that high oxygen blood over in the left one. 
so the foramen ovale is one. The ductus arteriosus is another difference. The ductus arteriosus is an artery in between the very top of the pulmonary trunk and the aortic arch. Again, pulmonary trunk as an adult, we should just say after we're born, has got low oxygen blood, the aorta's got high, but again, before you're born, it doesn't matter if you let the blood between that right and left pump, that pulmonary and systemic circulation mix. But again, that right there is a little passageway from pulmonary trunk to aortic arch. And of course, there's all the umbilical arteries and veins. Those are others there. These are major veins we're going to look at in our pictures in our lab book coming up next.